Now I feel like Carter Hart in net, the Flyers can beat any team on any night. Uh, Dave Isaac covers the Flyers. Courier Post, he joins us now. Why is it different, Dave, with Carter Hart in goal? Is it just coincidental, or does he legitimately make – does he make the goaltending position better, but does he also make the rest of the team better? Well, I think he, it's it's like a chicken or the egg thing, I guess, when you put it that way, Mike. But he makes the goaltending position better, and when he's making those saves, the team plays a little bit more confidently in front of him. Uh, and, and whether that means they start playing riskier or, or it just means that they know that in that crucial time they're going to get the save that they weren't getting uh, earlier in the season, uh, it, it's kind of meant both of those things. Seven-game win streak. What are some of the positives that have kind of led to this? Because they haven't all been pretty. They've been behind in games. They've had to go to overtime. They've coughed up leads. They've been, you know, down a bunch of goals. Yeah, and, and as I wrote today, I think this is the, the point in the win streak where you're you're kind of playing with fire a little bit because, as you mentioned, they, they haven't all been uh, – actually, as Scott Gordon called it, they haven't all been Picasso's. So I think you, you get to a certain point where you, you may be playing a little bit sloppily and maybe it's Carter Hart. Maybe it's the last game. It was the power play that, that saves you. Uh, they have to start putting together a little bit more complete efforts if they're going to do the, uh, I guess you can't say impossible, call it the highly unlikely and, and make a push towards the playoffs here. Scott Gordon, what does he add to this team? Because I know uh, for years you and I would talk, Dave, about Dave Haxtall and you know, there was a lot of questions about Dave, and then when the firing of Hextall happened, people thought, well, maybe Hextall was really pulling the strings. Let's see what Hextall brings to the table. He ended up getting fired. So what has Gordon done that maybe has impressed you? Well, the, the one thing that I think stands out most obvious to Scott Gordon's Philadelphia Flyers are the roles of some of the young players, and he has had the benefit of coaching them in the American League. So he, the way that he's put it to us is, if Oscar Lindblom makes a mistake, if Travis Sanna makes a mistake, I know why. And I'm not afraid to put them back out there because uh, I've coached these guys for a lot of these guys, uh, probably close to 100 games, maybe more. Uh, and, and he has experience with them to, you know, Dave Haxtell, where he didn't have as much experience with these uh, individual players. And, and when there was a mistake, he kind of said, you know what, this is my neck on the line too. Uh, I'm going to put out a, a guy that I trust. So yeah, that's another chicken of the egg scenario where you say, give me more ice time and I'll play better. Well, play better and I'll give you more ice time. Uh, it, it's both been working for a lot of the young guys. Now, one of the other things that Scott Gordon's done really well, uh, by all accounts in this locker room, is, is be a very good communicator. It doesn't mean that he's um, always, you know, kittens and rainbows. He, he's he's going to tell you if he sees something he doesn't like, but he's going to be direct about it. And uh, as one player told me today, nobody has to guess where they are. Uh, what, what, where they are within the Flyers' plans or if they're not playing, why that's the case and what they're not doing right. Scott Gordon makes that all very clear. Dave, tonight the Flyers have the Canucks, and the last time they met, it was December 15th, and that was arguably this team's low points, one of many for sure at least. And, you know, here they are tonight now with a chance to get a win and continue this win streak. What are your thoughts on tonight and, and the, how impactful this is now to get a win against this team? Yeah, well, Vancouver's without Sven Barchi, one of their top-line players, and they're, they're already a team that's not really uh, in the upper echelon of the NHL, so a very winnable game. And then you have Los Angeles uh, on Thursday, another very winnable game. The Flyers don't want to put the cart before the horse here, but there, there's an opportunity to make this streak extend and uh, erase even more of that playoff deficit that they had for themselves. As you mentioned, that is the last time they faced Vancouver was the last game of the Dave Haxtell era. Uh, I, I don't think any of the players really remember that, quite frankly. Uh, the fact that that, that was the, the opponent on, on that given day. Uh, but there's a lot of things going right for this team. And if they can continue having the power play go well, uh, I think that's probably going to be the biggest thing to keep them the streak alive. Uh, yeah, they had the four power play goals the other day in the game in the uh, comeback win. The Flyers, as you mentioned, uh, they got to keep collecting these things. 52 points. You know, it sounds very far-fetched for them to make the playoffs, you know, from where they were, but seven straight wins, does it have a feel of a team that thinks that they can pull off something that would you know, pretty, pretty, be pretty uh, historic here if they were able to do this? Not too many teams have been as far out as they were to make the playoffs. Yeah, they, they would make history if, if they were able to do that. The, the biggest deficit cut was the 2014-15 Ottawa Senators who were – 14 points out on February 7th. So 
So the, the Flyers uh, have, have uh, are not that far away, and it's not even February 7th yet. But they were 16 points out on, I believe it was January 18th. Uh, so if they were to pull this off, uh, that would be a huge comeback. And a lot of these guys have talked about how they, they can't help but look at the standings, but they don't they don't want to place any importance on it because it is, is such a long shot and it's such a big-picture goal where they can't get there without individual wins. Now they've got seven of them in a row. If they can continue this, uh, then, then maybe they are talking about history. Well, Dave, it's interesting because about a week or two ago, when you looked at the wild-card standings, they were second from the bottom. They have now leapfrogged one, two, three teams since that time. They're just, you know, one, one team separating them in the second spot in the wild card. Now uh, they find themselves just four points back of the wild card. So it sounds, when you put it like that, that talking playoffs is realistic. I mean, there's 30 games left. It's almost half the season. I, I mean, for, for anybody to try and predict they will do it, I I'd be very hesitant to do that because this has been a very streaky team over the years. Uh, they went on an 0-6-2 and losing streak, had a couple games in the middle, and then they went on this, what's now a seven-game winning streak. Last year, they, they won 10 in a row. Uh, they lost 10 in a row. They, I mean, this is a team that's, that's gone out and, and uh, been a very streaky team. So um, it's not quite lightning in a bottle, but you can't – also look at this and say this is what this team is because I don't think that would be correct either. Carter Hart, tomorrow, uh, tonight against Vancouver, right? Yep, Carter Hart plays tonight against the Canucks and then Anthony Stolarz goes against the Kings on Thursday. All right, uh, so it looks like the Flyers going to give Hart another shot to uh, play against Vancouver uh, tonight to uh, pick off. He's played very well, obviously did not uh, have his best game the other day, but I'll tell you, the one thing, he doesn't give up a lot of softies. That's the one big difference. Yeah, there was only the one, uh, and it was the shorthanded goal from Zach Cassian yeah. where you're like, yeah, he, he probably wants that one back. But outside of that goal, I mean, he's been very good. He, he's The only one poor game that he had was New Year's Eve in Carolina when he allowed three goals on ten shots and, and got pulled in that one. Other than that, he has looked anything but a 20-year-old. And the accolades start piling up, and, and you're hearing exactly what you would want to hear from him. You ask him about an individual award, and he points to the, the team's play. Uh, that's a very hockey thing to do, and, and they are piling up quickly. He was named the Rookie of the Month for January yesterday. Today it was the second star of last week uh, from the NHL, and the NHL Players Association named him their Player of the Week. So it's, it's starting to pile up very fast. And uh, Vancouver has a center, Elias Pettersson, who's pretty much run away with the uh, Calder Trophy given to the, the league's best rookie. But if, if Hart continues on, he can at least – get his way into the conversation. I still think it's Pedersen's award, but uh, the, the longer that Hart goes playing this way, uh, he might eke his way into a, a free trip to Las Vegas in the NHL awards just to see if, uh, you know, maybe he can sneak in there. Uh, Dave Isaac, Courier Post, covering the uh, Flyers tonight as they take on uh, Vancouver. You can hear the game here on 97.3 ESPN at Dave G. Isaac on Twitter. Dave, we'll see you soon, pal. All right. Talk to you soon.